What's up, everybody, and welcome to my NXT review. A lot of things going on in the show tonight. Uh, what does NXT have planned as this whole Dusty Classic tournament continues? Edge appearing on NXT tonight. So, yeah, a lot going on for NXT uh, for this week's show. Uh, but we do kick it off with Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez versus Kane Carter and Casey Conzaro in a semifinal for the Dusty Rose uh, Tag Classic match. Um, not a bad match, I should say. Um, actually, pretty good. Um, not bad. I kind of figured who was going to win right here. I will say one thing. Um, you know, Casey there jumping off uh, what was like one of the ledges or something at one point. Uh, kind of jumping on everybody was pretty good. Um, I feel like from the announce table and whatnot. You know, one thing I will say this um, with um, what Casey doing that crazy whatever 630 dive move. It looked like she missed the move when landing onto um, Gonzalez and whatnot. Um, I know Dakota Kai broke it up, but Gonzalez ended up getting her a uh, big, like, your night finish onto um, Casey and whatnot. So I kind of figured who was going to win this match. Not bad of a tag match, though, I should say that. But uh, Raquel and Dakota Kai move on. I'm sure some did have, um, you know, Casey and um, Kane winning, given that they are an actual tag team. And I feel like they were finally about to go somewhere with them, but they did not. But still, a very, um, not not a bad tag match, though. I will say that. So, yeah, Gonzalez and Dakota Kai go over. Um, well, I know they said that, hey, Wade Barrett is now a U.S. citizen and whatnot. Um, and whatnot. But after that, we did get, um, who do we get? Leon Ruff, who went against Austin Theory. Uh, Gargano was out there with him. One thing I thought I was kind of funny about this match, I know Gargano kept getting involved, but... When um, Leon Ruff was out there, he acted like he got punched by Gargano. Almost kind of pulled like an Eddie Guerrero type of thing, slapping his hands, falling to the ground, telling the referee he hit me. And next thing you know, that the, the referee had to get rid of Gargano then. Uh, but Leon Ruff, you know, came back with a cutter and whatnot. But Austin Theory kind of got control of him and ended up getting the um, ATL on him for the win. Um, Theory was about to get him with another um, ATL and whatnot. But next thing you know, Dexter Loomis showed up, tried to put into that chokehold and whatnot. But, um... He was, Theory was able to get away from it then as uh, Loomis took some of his hair then after that. But um, I actually thought it was funny with Leon Ruff, though. Uh, he just kind of pulled, um, like, boy, Eddie just kind of falling on the ground. Like, said, hey, man, he hit me, man. He hit me. And, uh, and you know, they had to get rid of Gargano then. But, uh, yeah, Theory, though, um, not, not bad, though, with him and Ruff. I'll say that. But obviously, it's going to be a Theory and Dexter Loomis match at some point in time. This... I don't know how to explain this well, so I'm going to try to explain this the best way they can. I guess they're trying to explain the whole, whatever that team with Zia Lee and them all is. Talking about the um, uh, Tien Sha, which look like um, some shit you see out of that game Okami and whatnot. Or um, very, um, like an old school uh, drawing in, um, I, know it's not, I know it's in Chinese, I know that. But uh, basically, they talked about how, uh, was it? Made sort of soul for the dragon, for the power um, of family. But, you know, um, I guess they had to defeat her brother in the war and talk about the Trin Sha. And that, you know, um, this, that's who's, apparently this, whoever was killed uh, is now being incarnated into whoever the leader with Bo and Zia Lee are. I have no idea what this is still. Okay, so apparently whoever the leader or the Orochimaru leader is, is that, um, they were, they are a dragon, apparently, or they killed a dragon. I don't know. I have to have this story explained again. I'm not really sure what's going on there, okay? I don't know. Uh, next, Legato Del Fantasma went against Lucha House Party, though. Um, not a bad match. Very good Lucha style, I should say. Um, not bad at all. It ended up with Legato Del Fantasma getting the win. I kind of figured that. But after that, MSK showed up. I'm still calling them Dez and Wentz because their new names sound like shit. And, um... Basically, they said that they're the Michael Jordan, well, Michael Jackson, you guys are Tito. And they said, you know, we're going to beat the brakes off your ass and whatnot. And I, I don't know, man, the promos are still not the best. Almost, they're basically still the rascals when I kind of look at I, I can get behind the MSK name, but I'm not going with those new names they got. And I don't know, Wentz, I'm not sure whether to keep them off the mic or not. Um, I know they're not trying to sound high because their last gimmick was them being high and whatnot, but... You know, this was kind of, I'm not even really sure what to say about their promo, but yeah, I guess they're finally letting get Dez and Wentz some, uh, some time to talk. God, those new names sound horrible, though. Uh, but uh, moving on, Pete Dunn, uh, Danny Burch, and Oni Lorcan came out 
as he talked, you know, he had Finn Balor, want to talk about Finn Balor, he says, I gave Finn Balor a message last week, but he didn't want to listen, so that's why I snapped his fingers. Balor came out, and, uh, you know, his fingers taped up and whatnot, Balor said, you know, how about you uh, do this by yourself, instead of having these two, two clowns uh, hide behind you all the time, and Pete Dunne says he doesn't hide behind anyone, but, you know, uh, you know Pete Dunne, uh, he looked on, Lord Cannon Birch left, and he said, you know, he told Balor, you better hold on to that uh, title, because I'm going to take the next chance I get. And the battle says, you know, you are going to have the, the next chance you will have. And it's going to be a Vengeance Day takeover. Now, let, let me let me say this. Uh, I, I want to say something about the title of this whole next takeover coming up. I It's cool they want to bring Vengeance back in a way. But Vengeance Day, listen, I know it's on Valentine's Day. Here's something you could have brought back. Why don't you bring back the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, okay? You haven't used that since 1999. That would have been a good way um, for this takeover. Why don't you just call it that? Why don't we have to call it Vengeance Day? Why don't you just call it Takeover Vengeance? All right, just say that. Oh, at NXT, Vengeance Day Takeover or Takeover Vengeance. Vengeance. Just say Vengeance. Don't even say Vengeance Day. I remember Vengeance. I know what the, the pay-per-view was, but... Vengeance Day just sounds kind of odd and lame. I would have just called it the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. They could have brought that back. That would have been a great idea to bring back. But they wanted to call it Vengeance Day. And that sounds very dumb. But after Balor said, uh, you know, uh, Pete Dunne has a chance. Next thing you know, Edge showed up. He is the Royal Rumble winner. Edge talked about how he's been watching NXT. He sees a lot of fire and passion from these guys. And with the second in that W and whatnot, it means a lot for wrestling. And he said that NXT helped him find passion to get back in the ring after being off for nine years. And that's what that passion brought him to win the Royal Rumble. And he can use that Royal Rumble, you know, with him being the winner. He can challenge anybody in the WWE right now. And he sees a lot of, you know, good and, um, you know, bad and Pete Dunne. He says, yeah, I would have done that shrug 10 years ago to myself also. And um, Edge says he's seen something about it. That he's operating himself all the time. That he's different. And he's somebody to watch. But, you know, hey, you guys are going to face a takeover. But I've never had that NXT title, Okay. And um, I haven't made my choice yet. Could be before or even after TakeOver. But what I see right now is intriguing. And, you know, you guys could convince me to get my final choice into this. So, yeah. Um, like I said, Edge showing up. You know, he is the Royal Rumble winner. He has not picked who he's going to uh, face at WrestleMania yet. And let me say this right here. I know he's going to most likely show up on SmackDown this Friday. And, you know, kind of do the same thing with Roman and whatnot. But... Uh, he's not facing the for the NXT title. Do I believe Edge is brought in for ratings to some little extent? Yes, but no at the same time. I don't see him go for the NXT title. Like, don't get me wrong. I think him and Balor would have a really good match. That's if Balor is even still the champion at that point. I'm going to get into probably in uh, Cross soon enough, too, since he ended up showing up uh, later on in the show. But um, I, I, I don't know. Like... Like I said, Ed Chase never had the title before, so I can get why he would want to go for it. Because I don't want to try to, like, discredit the NXT title, but why would Edge really go for the kind of lower tier belt, in a way, from, you know, a different part of the brand when, you, when you've been, like, what, 11, 12 world heavyweight champion at this point in time. So, um, I don't really see him going for the belt. And looking at Balor... Um, which I, some would say he's on borrowed time as champion because, let's be honest, yes, he did win the NXT title, but he's only had, like, literally, like, two, three feuds. The only people he's really beaten was, what, Cole to win the thing, and then he's been a feud with Kyle O'Reilly for the longest. Now he's on the Pete Dunne. Some, like, friends even say we could have seen him face Kushida or Champa or Thatcher or several other guys they have not put Balor against. But we all know the end result sooner or later is going to be Cross getting that damn belt back since he never lost it, but... Uh, Pete Dunne, I don't see him winning anyways against uh, Finn Balor for that NXT title. So, um, which I'm sure still be a great match, but he's not going to win. And I don't think Edge is still going to pick um, Balor. Like I said, I think it'll be a really great match, but it's not going to happen in WrestleMania. I, I'm sorry, that's just not definitely going to happen, all right? It's not. I, I just, I don't, I don't see it at all. It's not going to. But it was nice to see Edge show up on NXT, though. I didn't mind that. It was still cool to um, at least kind of put his two cents in saying, hey, I'm still watching. Uh, Johnny Gargano, I guess, was um, talking to a new interviewer. And I guess uh, she told him that he's going to be facing Kushida at TakeOver. Johnny was pissed. He went to the door. Kushida said that Regal was busy. Next thing you know, both guys started brawling. And to the outside, then to, you know, um, 
or Gargant, not Gargano, but Kushida kicked him, and then referees and security just had to break it up. Tony Storm went against Jesse Kamea. This match didn't really go nowhere due to Raquel Gonzalez. Not Raquel Gonzalez. Mercedes Martinez coming out, attacking um, Tony Storm, which both women started to brawl with each other. Io Shirai came out and just kind of sat at ringside watching them both kill each other until she did her big moonsault. And um, basically, I'm like I said last week, it's going to be a triple threat match for the title at TakeOver. Kurt Stallion. Texas there, the Lone Star Stallion, basically, so he's going to do Texas Proud by beating Santos Escobar tonight for the NXT title. Um, Cameron Grimes comes back next week. That's the NXT title. Cruiserweight title. Cameron Grimes, he's going straight to the boom, baby. Where have we not seen him on TV? Um, next, though. Ah, yes, yeah, Santos Escobar versus Kurt Stout for the uh, Cruiserweight title. Listen, it wasn't a bad match or anything, but come on, we all knew Kurt Stallion was never going to win. Um, Santos won, but I think the bigger story is, like, I, we all sure it was going to happen. Um, Scarlett Bordeaux ended up showing up somewhere in the perform performance center, and um, Cross came out, made quick work of the Legal de Fantasma guys, and just told Santos, and I'm going to give you time, okay? I'm going to give you time. And you're going to have a long time to think about the inevitable. As uh, you said, TikTok and Santos left. Yeah, Cross is basically going to kill him, okay? They don't really have any other opponents for Santos to face for that damn Cruiserweight title. So, hey, let's have Cross murder this guy when it happens. So, yeah, he's a dead man, okay? That's basically what I can say from this. Cross, he's basically going to kill him. And then when Edge, uh, you know, he was leaving, he hasn't made a decision yet. Cross said, you know, listen, man, you don't need to choose Pete Dunne or Balor. You shouldn't be worried about them. It's me because I never lost that title. As Edge said, we'll see then. Uh, we got to the main event, which probably may have been the best match of the entire night. Was the Undisputed Era, Adam Cole, Roderick Strong versus Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher. This was great. I enjoyed it. Really great match. Um, I like the finish. Uh, of course, a lot of these guys kind of brought into the outside. Cole hitting a super kick on a, uh, you know, Ciampa and then going for Thatcher then. But, you know, um, Thatcher took down Cole. Strong came with a big back right to the barricade. But when he tried to get in the ring, Champa hit the uh, Willow's Bell for the win. So um, Champa and Thatcher move on to the tournament then as they're going to be facing the Grizzly Young Veterans next week. They had a stare down at the end by the trophy. But, um, what, Champa punched him. And then all the, both the teams brawled before the show went off the air. So great main event, though, with the Undisputed Era and all of them. I kind of figured, um, you know, Thatcher and... Champ are going over since they are kind of like a makeshift tag team and whatnot. But I enjoyed NXT, though, tonight. Not a bad show, though, okay? Edge, of course, being on there. Uh, kind of, you know, still wondering who's he going to pick? Who's he going to face at the WrestleMania? Who will he pick? What champion will he chase, you know, pick to choose to fight? Uh, of course, we had the main event, though, the Dusty um, Clash of Tag matches. Not bad, though, especially, like I said, the last one of the night. That wasn't bad. Um, Santos and Kurt Stallion was okay, but come on, Santos is when we all know that's going to promote to the few what's going on there. Um, <clears throat> Theory at, um, Ruff was okay, I'll give it that too, so, um, yeah, not a bad show at NXT tonight, not bad at all. Like I said, with Edge being on the show, that was a very vital part of it, so yeah, we did get the Rated R NXT tonight, Rated R NXT, folks, okay? Um, so yeah, I don't know if uh, we'll see more of Edge on here, but I'm sure we're going to see Edge this Friday on SmackDown as he's going to, you know, kind of contemplate if he'll pick Roman and that too, uh, to face a WrestleMania for the title, like I said earlier. But other than that though, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at hood 890 Tell me what you think about NXT tonight, what do you think about Edge showing up on NXT, was he used for a ratings ploy, yes or no. But other than that though, I'm out of here, I'll see you guys later, peace out, really good episode tonight.